a few ways. One was, of course, first making sure that we, and as a, as a franchisor, and that I, as the leader on the ground, had very strong relationships with the franchisee, the local. So even if you're not in a franchise model, whoever mm-hmm. your most senior local partner is, mm-hmm. that relationship has got to be incredibly strong. In franchising, they're the ones who write the check for the employees, right? They're not my employees. They're the franchisees' employees. They are the ones who have relationships with the local authorities, Mm -hmm. the regulatory bodies, the community, Mm -hmm. um, you know, all the things. And so first and foremost, that relationship must be strong because I have no power in -hmm. a country where I don't speak the language, don't know the laws, don't know the customs with an auditor or um, a milk vendor um, Mm -hmm. who is often coming on a bicycle, not coming in a truck. Um, Mm -hmm. And so I cannot underscore that enough. Like who who is that local partner? Do they have a high integrity reputation? Are they going to represent you and your brand well when things are not perfect? Because most of the time they will not be, especially early. And do you have an excellent relationship with them? And so thinking of all the things required to build a relationship, getting to know them, letting them get to know me, helping them when they have a moment of need, Mm -hmm. you know, all of these things, it takes time. Mm -hmm. Second is once I got on the ground to help with the opening Mm -hmm. is doing the same with all of the people that they have hired that are key stakeholders. But I have to do that in a matter of 24 hours, right? I don't have weeks to build a relationship. So uh, one is let them get to know me as a person. And then try to do the same for them in a way that is culturally appropriate. And that varies from country to country. Um, How how vulnerable, you know, how open, talking about our personal lives. But it matters, even if we can talk a little bit, because people get to see there's a person behind the authority figure or the, you know, the the outsider coming in. Right. Uh, Next is show them through my actions that I am there for them. My job is literally for them to be successful. And that some days that was something as small as bringing tea, coffee, donuts. And Mm. and I didn't have to show up and say, look, I thought so much of you that I got up early. I went to the bakery. I brought you food. Mm. All of that is obvious when they show up and I have this display for them. So through a simple act of thoughtfulness, Mm -hmm. it is I am demonstrating that I took the most valuable thing my time Mm -hmm. and prioritized their joy, their efficiency. And and it was also selfish. I don't want them wanting to run around the corner to go to get a croissant. (laughs) You know, I don't want them running to go. I want them to have everything they need right there. And I want them to know I care. So these little tiny things every day that show through my actions, I'm here for you. That's the second thing. Um, And the third is to hold people accountable. Uh, People don't trust leaders who can't hold boundaries and expectations. So if some employees uh, would come in late or not follow the protocol, in the first 24 to 36 hours, they have to witness me holding the standard, even if it means sending someone home, Mm -hmm. pulling them aside, if it's legal in the country, firing them, if that's what the appropriate thing Mm -hmm. is. Um, much easier to do in some countries than in others. Um, so that this idea of trust isn't just building relationships. It is also seeing that you can lead. It's I have two children. I have a three-year-old and a five-year-old. And it's very similar to how children push boundaries. Not that adults push boundaries in the same way, but they similarly, they need to see someone creating the borders of what's acceptable. Mm-hmm. Um, And so um, it's the little things, literally, timeliness, um, following rules, protocol, of course, kind, because we don't have that long of a relationship. So I'm being on the more caring, kind, and courteous side. Mm -hmm. But do those three things Mm -hmm. over and over and over in small ways and in large. And, you know, I I would typically be in these countries for 30 to 40 days, sometimes a little longer. So I become a a temporary resident. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and there are a few other things that are less operation specific or leadership specific that 
-hmm. are just about humans being effective in other cultures, but they are worth repeating, um, which is to not make assumptions, Mm -hmm. do my best to learn pieces of the language, even if it is hello, goodbye, thank you, Um, watch body language and try to mirror it, you know, Mm -hmm. do anything that I can to be respectful of all the what might be centuries of programming in mm-hmm. people. And that that was one of the more challenging parts, especially not just going from America to one country, but mm-hmm. going from Argentina to China mm-hmm. and going from China to Montreal. And the mm-hmm. different, you know, these are radically different experiences that I would need to adjust my own volume to right. back to back without losing Mm -hmm. the authority and the approach I needed to still get the job done. I couldn't flex myself so much to local ways of working, Mm -hmm. like the Bahamas, for an example, where it's island time. Mm -hmm. Um, I couldn't flex myself so much to island time because otherwise the restaurant would have never gotten open, right? Because people are just like, "Eh, whatever. And I'm like, okay, I, I get it. Please, could you come help me over here? Even though I can, I am paying them to come help over here. So the the idea of respecting culture and being embedded in culture is another, um, and and that will bridge to something that is less about building trust and more about understanding how to tweak a brand for Mm -hmm. every culture. And there are some things that should remain the same. And there are often many things that need to be different. And if you don't do the work to figure out what that is up front, you can be not only ineffective, Mm -hmm. maybe even embarrassed, but possibly even offensive. And everything from the name of product to the way you show imagery and pictures Mm -hmm. um, to the music that you play, understanding how it is viewed in reference to local reference points Mm -hmm. is a critical pre-entry process for any, any business. Right.